When we talk about running racing, we think pinning a number to our vest and lining up alongside many others. Well, in recent years, a new kind of running race has emerged that allows you to compete with others, but entirely solo. And no, I'm not talking about Strava segments. I'm talking about something much bigger than that. I'm talking FKTs. FKTs are fastest known times. Now the attraction of them is that there is no entry fee, there's no set date, there's no governing body. It's just about you trying to set the fastest time you can over a set course. And typically these are notorious and challenging courses. To hold an FKT is no mean feat. And today GTN are going to give one a go. There are currently 2,898 FKTs registered around the world. And for a course to become registered, it's relatively simple, really. It needs to entail primarily running and hiking. It needs to cover a distance of at least five miles or at least 500 feet of climbing. And that leaves it open to some pretty epic and iconic routes. You've got the 266 kilometer Tahoe Rim Trail, for example. You've got the 805 kilometer Colorado Trail, and you've even got the 3,523 kilometer Appalachian Trail. Yeah, they go on. Obviously, they aren't all quite as insane as Heather's just mentioned, but there are a limited number of them worldwide. And to hold one of these FKTs has become quite prestigious. So when we discovered that there is an FKT on our doorstep here in Bath, and it's not one of these ridiculously long ones, we decided we had to give it a go. It is the Dan Booth round that almost circumnavigates Bath. The distance is approximately 38 to 40 kilometers and 1,000 meters of ascent. I say approximately because this route simply has 10 trig points that you need to hit with no specified route between. Currently, the men's record stands at three hours and 28 minutes of a lap time. The women's three hours 51. And I mean, Mark might have his eyes set on it, but realistically, we're just here to give it a go. We're pretty excited about trying and finding out a bit more about FKTs. And talking of which, I know that Mark, you went and caught up with someone who does know a lot about them. and Hopefully he's got some advice for us. Okay, so I'm here with Damien Hall, who is a phenomenal ultra runner. Now, Damien, you've achieved some pretty incredible records over the past year or so. Um, could you explain them to me? Oh, well, uh, that's very kind and, and thanks, for having, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I guess partly for, for most, most runners and, and perhaps triathletes, um, not many races this year. Um, so I've done three, three record attempts or, or FKTs, fastest known times as, as they're sometimes called. Um, what, my first one I, I planned to do anyway, but then when I realized they were gonna be you know, no races or not many races. I, I set my sights on a couple that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, and yeah, and thankfully they all they all turned out okay. You got a, the big hat trick as well this year, didn't you? So the Pennine Way was a huge one, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the biggest. I'd almost say the, the, almost the holy grail for me. Um, the, possibly my best, sort of best achievement, or, or at least domestically. Um, so the Pennine Way is a 260, well, it's 268 miles, but you actually only run 260. Uh, it's a long, long story, I won't bore you with this. But um, the record had stood for 31 years, um, and it was two days and 17 hours by a guy called Mike Hartley. Um, and then this year, a friend of mine um, who called John Kelly, who's an American who, who lives just over the border from us in, in Somerset, but he broke the record by 34 minutes. You know, it stood for 30, 31 years. Um, but he had quite a tough time. He had, had a lot of tummy problems um, and yeah eight days later I, I went um, and I was yeah quite fortunate we were able to be beat his record by by three hours um, which still friends. just about I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was very kind actually he, he came to the finish line to, to see me which was a, a really wonderful gesture and Mike Hartley the guy who'd broken it 31 years ago turned out on both our attempts he was there at the finish as well um, so it's yeah it was there, there was a wonderful sort of community feeling um, around it. Um, I mean, yeah, I feel sorry for John that he broke this incredible record, only had it for eight days, but I believe he's quite probably going to go back next year and try again, yeah, which um, sure should add to the story. Well, absolutely amazing. And um, I mean, you you really excelled in these longer distance ones, and I, I'm, I know you've got some more planned. Uh, Heather and myself are targeting a much shorter one, the Dan Booth round, which is around 38 kilometers, um, just shy of a marathon around Bath. Obviously a lot of elevation in it. Um, 
very keen to get your advice ahead of this. I mean, you are so experienced in these FKTs and planning for them. How much plan, obviously they're much longer than the ones that you've done, but what, what sort of things are you looking at when you're going to do one of them? Well, almost, um, I mean, what's great compared to a race, of course, is you can pick when. Um, so you can pick a time to suit you. Uh, to some people, that, that could be a time of year, it could be a time of week, um, could be a time of day. You've got all those factors you can choose. Um, some of us are morning people, some of us aren't, you know, for things like that. Um, so that, that's one thing to think about. The next one is, you know, are you going to be supported or self-supported or unsupported? So you've got, you've got a choice of three. Um, so that brings in you know, a whole, you know, what suits you. I've done some, I've done some unsupported or self-supported for the Penang Way. The record was so good and I knew he was fully supported as in he, he had, a, you know, a car meeting him at road crossings, a team of pacers running with him. So on the Penang Way, I, I did the same style because I, um, I thought I'm not going to get close to his record if I don't. Um, so you've got that, you've got that to think about. Um, then I suppose, yeah, I mean, how often are they going to meet you if you are supported? If, if you're not supported, um, are you, are you going to, you know, you could cash some, some, some supplies ahead of you um, and be self-supported if you wanted, and then you can travel a little bit quicker, a little bit lighter. Um, partly what I love about FKTs and that kind of culture is, is that it's more about adventure to me than, than a race is, where, where so, much of is, so much of the aspects are taken care of. So if you wreck it, you are denying yourself a bit of adventure because it's not fresh to you. But if you're trying to break a record, of course, if you wreck it, I mean, it will be, that will help. Um, so yeah, if you're going for, if you're going for the record, um, it's better if, yeah, it's better if you know where you're going. Just, it's not just the logistics of um, turning, you know, not turning right when you should turn left. The, the mental side is, you know, am I going the right way? Where should I go here? Like that, that's actually a lot of stress over, over several hours. Um, and, and the calmer you are, yeah, in your mind, the, the more reassured you are, I know it's down here and you know, that, that's a, it's a huge difference. And, uh, we're moments away from starting. <laughs> I want to cry, we haven't even started. <laughs> I, think, I think we've picked the worst day ever. And this doesn't, this doesn't even count as a winter attempt. No, um, well, why does it not? What's the winter attempt? <laughs> <laughs> winter attempt is from the winter solstice till the spring, sorry, oh. the winter equinox till the spring equinox, which isn't until like the 20th of December. It's eight degrees and raining. <laughs> yeah, um, and I mean, we do know the area, but I've got to be honest, I don't know many of these routes and trails that it's uh, suggested today. No, I know a bit of it, and I know some of it is ridiculously muddy. My shoes haven't dried out from last week. <laughs> We we're going to give it a crack and we are kind of looking forward to the adventure. This is going to be a tough, tough day. I day, think. Yeah, yeah, a whole day as well. Mm. <laughs> Should we do it, Heather? Let's start. I think we have to. Let's go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. What sort of pace are you going for? <laughs> I'm going for survival pace. Okay. Whatever that is. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a pacing one, isn't it? Like, I was thinking kind of the equivalent of like a five minute K site kind of effort, but yeah. that feels sustainable, but oh, yeah, who knows? Because I mean, look at this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could be on our faces half the time, so. <laughs> or asses. Yeah. First walk of the day. <laughs> but yeah, Mark, you're going to. Have to run at your comfortable pace. Oh yeah, I'll keep, I'll keep cracking. We, you may see me again. I'm sure I won't. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Breath and I'm not even three minutes in. So we have a very, very sharp hill to begin with. On this side, we can see Bash. I love this view. Why are my all time things? I don't know how many times I've it. Onwards. Oh no. I'm very slippy. <laughs> what did I get? The socks are wet. Tell you what, this hill takes no prisoners. I'm not even well, 25 minutes in, 
and my heart rate has been an average of 160. I've done an elevation um, again of around 240 meters. So if it carries on like this, oh my god, there's going to be a lot of walking. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Yay! Whew. Triangulation station. Ordnance Survey. I didn't know trick points were called triangulation triangulation stations. It's a tongue twister, isn't it? I don't actually know the significance of them except they're at the top of a hill and they're used for navigating. You can't see them from any other hills. Um, probably should go home and do some homework on that one, shouldn't I? Especially as I'm going to be visiting all ten around Bath. Oh, might as well give you a tourist view here. The battle, ba <laughs> the battlefield information board. Oh. It's being refurbished <laughs> and refitted. <laughs> Sorry, no history lesson from me. I definitely need to bring more chat to this game, don't I? Don't know what a trig point is and don't know. There's something about the Battle of Lansdowne and it was a long time ago. There you go, 1643. I told you it was a long time ago. I don't think these flags were there then. And I've just realized that they're swords. So it was obviously some sort of sword fighting. I'm going to put this puzzle together as we go along. See if I can bring you any more on the Battle of Lansdowne. 1643, remember that one. On to the next trick point, it's just up here. This is not a day for reading signs, but here's some pictures. There was a real battle here, somewhere around here. Sir Bevel Grenville's monument. Yeah, it's where he was killed at the. Battle of Lansdowne. Of course, why didn't I do that? I've covered 14k, so I'm about a third of the way, which is actually quite good news because I didn't even think I'd get this far. Oh, here it is. Oh, steep hill there. I've got my heart rate back down, average around 140, which is for me pretty normal, pretty steady sort of heart rate. Um, and actually, the elevation gains kind of slowed down a little bit, so um, perhaps it's just a really hard start to this. I've been running down this track for quite a long time, I've had some time to make a phone call to my friend who's hopefully to join me if we can coordinate it because I don't know how long it's going to take me to get to our meeting point and I don't want her waiting in the cold and the wet but also I think my phone's about to die because it's got a hole in the top of it and the rain's just gone in it. Hi, got an interesting part of the course here actually because in a second I'm going to go that way I'm actually going to do an out and back that way off to the left because there's a little trick point so it's kind of the quickest way of doing it, just a quick out and back and then carry on on the route. I'm not sure <laughs> how long I've got company for, but I'm going to make the most of it. I'm not going to film very much, I'm afraid. Just going through the halfway point, and amazingly, I'm very surprised, about a minute or so slower than the record pace for the halfway point. <laughs> um, which I really wasn't expecting. Um, still, Mark, keep calm, don't get carried away. A long way to go. I have 
just realised that we're halfway through the run and didn't even notice. So busy chatting. I'm talking about something else being halfway and realise I've done just over 20k and if I haven't got too lost or don't get too lost, the whole thing's about 40 and done quite a few hills. I've only done four of the points but the next two are quite close together so I'll soon be halfway on those. So it's all good. And we're running along a flat surface that isn't muddy, which is great. So things are looking up. Oh, and it stopped raining too. Right, roughly about 11K remaining. Um, and actually, pretty much bang on an hour until that record time clocks by. So, I don't know. I feel like this might still be possible, but quite ambitious with the, uh, the terrain I'm taking in. And, Oh, see, I'm getting quite tired now. Five. <sighs> I'm sad to say that Natasha and I have split ways, so she's heading back now. She didn't join me for 10K, which was awesome and made such a difference. And it's so funny how strong or influential your mind is, because now she's left, I suddenly feel like my knees and hips are really aching. And yeah, I mean, I've done 25K, so I've only got 15K to go. So I've definitely broken the back of it. And now it's suddenly gone like, Ugh. Plus, I can't find trig point number six. And I know it said on the notes that it's no longer available, whatever that means. But I'm at the highest point and I can't see it. There's like, something in there that looks like it might have used to have been but it's private land so I'm just going to have to accept that number six isn't going to be found and that I'm still on route because I'm following the path I'm not deviating anymore and I'm just going to keep plodding on final gel got about 9k to go. Frisky. <laughs> Feel like I need it. <sighs> Otherwise I'm gonna have to take a emergency trip into a little convenience store or supermarket. That was a bit sketchy. We are back on the trail though. <laughs> oh dear, I think I've lost a bit, bit of time there. Oh. I'm not gonna lie, um, just had to do a really sketchy bit of main road with no pavement and it's getting a bit dark. So that was a bit scary. I had to keep hiding in the hedge and I survived it but I don't know where I am so I'm just going to keep trusting the route and hopefully I'll find a trig point just in a field waiting for me gotta say this is super cool I've lived in and around Bath for years now and I've never been on these trails and they're wicked look at them this no one here yeah so i mean this is a hard hard little challenge but you know it's made me explore which is awesome and to find stuff just even like a kilometer or so from city center i've never seen before it's amazing Right, next trick up there. Ooh, punchy one. Didn't even know this one existed. I know, I know it's not over till it's over, but if I want to get this, I've got average around four minutes per K for this final four and a half K. Doesn't look like I'm doing four minutes per K right now, is it? Yeah. I think these last couple of tricks is gonna make it impossible. There we go, here's the next trick. 
Awesome. Right, approaching the coordinates for the final trick, which is apparently here all over shoot just a fraction to be on the safe side. And yeah, now, oh God, I haven't got long, but we're close to finish. This is going to have to be a heroic effort. I don't know if I got this in me. So close. Come on, I live for this. Woo. That's the start. So we finished start. Ah. 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 Oh my goodness, that was hard. I was finished it, finished running there around 3.30 per K for the ah, got cramp for the final sort of half K there. Oh. That was awesome. Hard, but awesome. Oh god. Oh, I hope Heather's doing alright. Do you want the good news? Found a footpath. So I am on the right route. The bad news is this. And my feet had just about dried as it stopped raining. And I don't think there's a way around the edge. I really don't want to get muddy feet. Oh, oh no, that's going to be squelchy. And now I'm getting attacked by brambles. Oh. Uh. Oh. I really feel like the trig point might have been somewhere up there. That's the top of the hill. But it didn't tell me to go that way. And now, what would you do? I've gone round the trig point, so it's on my right hand side, so I'm not cutting off any corners. I don't think I'm gonna go up that hill. It's getting dark and I'm getting tired. So I'm gonna carry on down the valley. And I think there's not too many more hills. I don't wanna jinx it. But, do you know, I was actually wondering if there is such a thing as an SKT, because I feel a little bit silly talking about this FKT, fastest known time, because obviously this right now, it's not very fast and I'm not gonna be doing a fastest known time. Maybe the fastest known time for a woman on whatever date it is in November 2020 during a pandemic lockdown. I might win that one, but I'm not gonna be faster than anyone else. And I'm actually wondering if I'm gonna be the slowest person to have ever done this route. If I am, I think I should get a badge for an SKT. So as I carried on down through that field, it really started to get properly dark, but there were just a few kilometers left to go. And thanks to the head torch, I managed to carry on and make it to the finish. All right, I'd love to pretend that we have just finished, but it's daylight. And as you realize, I finished in the dark, Mark. I know you finished in the light. How was it for you? It was absolutely amazing. I don't know what you thought, but that route was incredible. Um, given I've lived here for so long, there were points that I'd never been to before or seen before, but um, yeah, really enjoyed it. How did you get on with your time? Then? Um, well, I mean, I'd soon realized like actually from the start when you ran off and I was like walking that my strategy was quite different to yours. And I very much went to enjoy it and just to kind of, it was nice putting it all together because I know lots of the bits, but I hadn't joined it. And I have looked at my time and realized it took me four hours 44 of moving time, five hours, 26 in total. So I think I stopped for quite a lot, but you were a lot quicker, I gather. Yeah, I mean, I didn't actually stop the watch at all. So I kept moving the entire time. Um, I did set out, like, I, I, whilst I'd love to say I was going after the record, I really wasn't actually start off, I was trying to just like hold myself back. But as I got to halfway, I realized, 
I was actually quite close to it, so I might just crack on and keep pushing. But then I was going into kind of unknown territory of these, this longer distance. I did go three hours, 32.50. So I was just four minutes off the record in the end. And um, it was very slippy. So I don't know, maybe I'll have to give it a go at some point. Yeah, again. I think um, you've set a bit of a, an ignited a flame as well for all the local trail runners. Yeah. I think people are going to be out on that. But do have a look at the FKT website because there are so many routes and you might well find one that's on your doorstep that like we didn't know about. Yeah, and they're just honestly an amazing way to explore, have some fun, maybe a bit of a battle with some other friends. Because I know even already <laughs> I've got some friends wishing me like, I'm going to beat your time, Mark. So um, yeah, do get stuck into it. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a like. Don't forget to give us a follow over on social media and a subscribe just down below.